Uh, well, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Christy, and I have uh, Adriana too. Good morning, everyone. Like I said, have a good day. <laughs> good morning. Uh, we're with Fairway Independent Mortgage, and um, we are so excited to be uh, sponsoring this class along with Lawyers Title and Madison. Um, and then we have Dr. Frank. So uh, Dr. Frank is a psychologist, and I have had the privilege of actually being in his class in person um, before all of this. And I am just so excited that he's extended uh, his class digitally to Zoom for all you guys uh, he has some amazing uh, content, so excited for you guys to learn a lot. Uh, you should have received, if you registered, uh, you should have received a handout that uh, Dr. Frank likes you guys to use to follow along. If for some reason you don't have it, um, just go ahead and um, put your email address in the chat box and I can go ahead and make sure to get you that really fast. And without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, give it over to Madison. Great. Hi guys, thank you so much for attending and thank you Dr. Frank for your time. I know in this crazy world, we're all trying to think of what we can do to really stand out, whether it's get listings, how to help get our buyers offers accepted. And, and I think, you know, having Dr. Frank tell us what we can do to differentiate ourselves is what we really need right now. So I'll let him get going because you guys came here to listen to him and not to us. So we'll, we'll get going. Thanks so much. Sounds good. Thank you. Is it my turn? Sweet. All right. Uh, I will assume that you guys can all see and hear me unless otherwise noted. Um, I want to I want to sort of share my approach to this class before I before I jump right in. Um, I have attended uh, lots of Zoom classes over the last couple of months, as I'm sure you all have. And to me, there's two different types of classes. Uh, there's one that actually informs you and teaches you something. Uh, and then there are those that uh, they're basically like an hour and a half long sales pitch disguised as a class uh, and you don't necessarily learn as much. It's just building up to the thing that they want to sell you at the end. Uh, yep. But you know that this is going to be one of those ones where you're actually going to learn stuff. Uh, and in fact, I have nothing for sale technically at the end of this. Um, this this class is basically the, the first part of what I want to do for you. Um, we are going to talk today about if you guys have something that makes you unique and therefore you're able to, to market that. That's what we're going to be able to figure out today. So our class uh, today is going to, to focus on three main sections. The first section we're going to talk about is some of the problems that you might be experiencing if you don't have you know a unique marketing message to put out there some of the problems that you might be experiencing because of that um and then we're going to talk spend the most most of our time probably talking about uh, a lot of ways that folks attempt to market themselves uh, and we think that it should be really effective um we're going to sort of walk through and and see which of those things are actually effective and which ones are not uh and then we're going to sort of wrap up by talking about now that we know what not to do uh you know now we're going to know what to do and, and how to actually develop a brand uh and something that sets you apart from uh from everybody else um so by by the end of the actual class today some of you will realize that you actually have something that makes you unique uh, and therefore you can you can go and, and sort of market that and play to that um, if if past numbers or any indication the majority of you will realize that your marketing message actually falls into more of a, a generic category um, and therefore we need to, to do something about that so after this class uh, what is available to all of you and again not for sale but available to you um, we are going to offer our time to sit down individually with each of you, get to know you, interview you, uh, and really go through the first step of our branding process and help you discover what it is that makes you unique. Again, there's no cost to that. Um, it's just an extension of this class. So today we're going to learn about sort of the, the nuts and bolts, what and how and why and all that good stuff. Uh, and then we're also going to offer the opportunity to, for each of you. Um, we're going to sit down and interview and help figure out what makes you unique. So at the very end, um, there'll be an opportunity to, to sign up for a, a call just to follow up with me so we can get that set up. Again, literally nothing for sale. We're just doing that as an extension of this class for everybody that's attending today. So I just want to get that out there. Um, 
One of the things that I like to know from my audience, and you guys can use the chat box and uh, sort of type, you type your answer in, uh, and so we can all sort of see those. Um, why did you decide to attend today's class? Why, why tune into to this class or this topic? Um, you know, everybody sort of has a, a different reason, something, to, something different maybe caught your eye on the flyer. What is it that you're hoping to learn today or why did you decide to uh, jump in and attend? Oops. Um, so if you guys want to be great and I want to share in a second, um, just sort of my motivation for starting the business that I did and why I teach what I teach and, and how I go about doing that. Um, I just like to have, you know, opportunity for us to get to know each other a little bit, even though we, uh, we can't be in person right now. So if anyone is brave enough to, uh, to jump in and share your answer. New branding techniques, absolutely. new strategy in that that word new comes up a lot and if you guys uh, are still typing in answers feel free to keep going uh but that word new comes in a lot right some sometimes we have to change with the times and therefore there's something new that we need to to do um sometimes something new as well yeah uh sometimes we've just been doing things a certain way for a long time uh and it has worked it has gotten us to a certain point um but maybe it hasn't gotten us everywhere that we want to be. Uh, and so obviously incorporating something new into to the things that have already been working, adding something on, um, you know, that, that can be helpful as well. Um, I do marketing for realtors and always looking to learn more. That's from Richard. Richard, sounds like you and I should chat. Uh, curious as to what you do for and with realtors. Uh, how to best convey my value that that resonates with consumers, Vince? I think you hit I, I think you hit the uh, the nail on the head there. That's literally what we're. Gonna I talk don't about. know what I did either. <laughs> oh, I hear. I don't know uh, what I did. <laughs> so, Vince, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of um, there's a lot that we know about ourselves and the service that we're trying to provide, but how do we communicate that in a quick, efficient way so that it does resonate with a potential client and they know to choose us? That's literally exactly what we're going to talk about today. So uh, I want to share just a, my quick background story uh, in terms of how I started doing this and, and literally why I teach what I teach and, and why it's so important. Um, my first job, if you want to call it that, was working for my dad he owned and still owns it's a it's a painting and powder coating um, mm -hmm. arts business which basically means you know they'll they'll get some like metal piece uh but they'll get like ten thousand of them and you got to paint them all the same and then pack them all up and ship them out um so it was the summer after my freshman year of high school um and for eight hours a day five days a week for an entire summer i got to take a piece and put it in a bag and put it in a box and take a piece and put it in a bag and put it in a box for five dollars an hour if i didn't mention that um it was super exciting uh, i mean i liked working with my dad but the work was not super exciting um and if you guys are familiar at all with rich dad poor dad you know the whole idea that poor dad is the one who you know works a job and tells his kid to go get a job uh, and rich dad is the one who owns a business or invests and, and has money sort of grow exponentially um, my dad being the business owner you think he would be the rich dad but his advice to me was business ownership is entirely too stressful the ups and downs are entirely too much you know ultimately his journey wasn't worth it and so he didn't think mine would be worth it either and his recommendation to me was go to school get a good paying job and you'll be much happier in life. And I thought he knew what he was talking about because he came home very stressed out every day. Um, and we know that the failure rate for, you know, self-employment is extremely high, which is unfortunate. Um, so I listened, I went to school for a super long time, uh, got a bachelor's, a master's, a PhD, became a psychologist, did, you know, more of a traditional psychologist thing for a few years. Uh, but I wasn't helping who I wanted to help. And my dad's words came back to me about, you know, business ownership and self-employment and how the failure rate is high and all that. Uh, and I realized that my background actually lends itself very well to uh, helping people that are self-employed or own businesses uh, to be more successful. Marketing is like 99 and a half percent 
uh, psychology. So uh, now instead of being Dr. Bavakwa, because no one can pronounce that anyway, I get to be Dr. Frank, which is way more fun. Um, you know, if you want to get real deep about it, like I couldn't save my dad because he's still sort of miserable and running that business, um, still in business, but like, you know, not, not as successful as maybe he would want it to be. Um, so I'm trying to save everybody else, right? We're all, we're all competing for a, a piece of the pie and some of us just want to, you know, be able to pay our bills and some of us have loftier expectations. Either way, I'm trying to help more people say that their self-employment journey was worth it. Um, so that's sort of where my motivation for doing what I do comes from. And again, obviously the psychology background, we're going to talk about what makes you unique and how to craft a message in a way that actually resonates with a consumer. Um, so again, that's, that's just a little bit of background of, of how I, I got started. And I started almost six years ago now. Um, in terms of what we're going to talk about today, every business needs to solve some problem or fulfill some want or need. If you're not doing one of those things, you're not going to be in business for very long. In terms of the problem that I'm trying to help you all solve, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but there are a whole lot of you. Um, I think the last number I saw was something like 60,000 uh, licensed agents in Arizona. Maybe something like 40,000 of them are in just like the greater Phoenix area. Um, you know, and not every single one of them is, is full-time or active, uh, but for the most part, there are tens of thousands of options out there, which from the consumer perspective, cool. Um, you know, they have lots of options. From your perspective, having lots of competition, not so great. Um, and unfortunately, if, if you're not able to, to stand out and, you know, bring business in, you don't get to stay in business, right? On the surface, you guys all look the same. It's my job to help you all stand out. So that's that's sort of where um, you know this this comes from. What we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm going to try to pull up my whiteboard feature here. Uh, let's see. So what I want to talk about first is, uh, and if you have that handout that I think was sent out this morning, you should have the outline. The first thing we're going to talk about is. Um, basically all the, the problems that you might be experiencing uh, if you don't have a unique marketing message. So the first problem that you might be experiencing is related to money. Now, this is not necessarily the amount of money in total that you're making, but it's more about how much an individual client is essentially willing to pay you, how much of your commission are they willing to pay a full three percent or do they expect some sort of discount now for as long as i have been doing this class and it's it's been a while and i've taught it a number of times um it has been uh rare to say the least that anybody who has been in real estate for more than like a month uh has not been asked for a discount on their commission at some point um or been told that you know you seem great but i'm going to go with this other option because uh they're offering me a discount instead so here is now we know some people are cheap and we get that um but for the most part we're willing to pay more if we perceive greater value so uh the example i like to use here i have my uh my kirkland from costco bottles of water right so i have two bottles of water that are the exact same size, the exact same label, the exact same product, right? There's no difference between these two things. If somebody is already selling this first bottle of water for a dollar, can I come along and try to sell the same exact thing for $2? Now, initially that seems really hard, right? It would be a lot easier if I came in and tried to sell mine for 50 cents. If I undercut my competition, uh, you know, then I can attract more business for, uh, for sure. Most of us don't necessarily want to do that with our commission. We know that the, the standard is 3%, right? So you can come in and offer two, one and a half, one, you can go down as low as you want. Um, but the idea is if we can communicate value, then we can get full price. Um, so can I make my bottle of water $2 when another one is available, same exact thing for a dollar? And the answer is yes. There's a couple of different ways that we can do that. Uh, one, it's very hot outside. So if I knew that my competition was selling room temperature bottles of water and mine happened to be refrigerated and cold, 
all of a sudden does my same product, same size, does my bottle become worth $2 when it's 110 outside? Probably, right? Um, if I told you that, you know, I knew that my competition was selling bottles that were unsealed, right? Which is gross anyway, and especially in a time like this, no one's gonna trust that. Uh, I can come along and sell my sealed bottles of water for $2. Uh, I can tell you that if you buy my $2 bottle of water, one of those dollars is going to go to charity. Um, you know, th so there's different ways that I can get my bottle of water worth $2. Maybe I deliver mine to you for $2 as opposed to you having to come pick up a bottle for $1. Um, so I can make it worth two if I communicate what my value is uh, accordingly. Now, that's sort of the key there is it is your job as the service provider, as the business owner, to communicate what the difference in value is and to do that effectively. It is not the consumer's job to do all the research and sort of figure out which one's better or which one do I like more. If my bottle is cold and my competitor's is not, but I don't communicate that, I can't blame the consumer for not coming up and touching both of them and trying to figure it out, right? It is your job to know that, hey, I have cold bottles and my competitors don't. And so I'm gonna communicate that and let everybody know. If you do that effectively, then you wind up competing on value, not based on price. Uh, and you don't have to you know, suffer uh, you know, through the discounts and being asked for, for discounts uh, on your commission. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I should have I should have noted. I'll, I'll remind you. If you have any questions at any point, feel free to type them into uh, the chat box. Either I will see them as it pops up on my end, uh, or maybe one of the folks helping us host today uh, will catch it and grab my attention. So if at any point you have questions, uh, feel free to to type it in, and I will try to address that. Let's pull my whiteboard back up here. Okay, problem number two that you might be experiencing. Uh, if you're not effectively communicating, you know, the value that you bring and how it, it differs from, you know, the other options that are out there. The dreaded cousin, right? Uh, again, it is extremely rare that anybody who has been in real estate for more than a month or two or three uh, has not lost out on a piece of business to someone who's like, oh, you know, I'm just going to use uh, my cousin instead. They just got licensed. I'm going to go with him or her. Um, what are they telling us about our service in that moment? They're telling us a couple of things. One, they don't necessarily see the difference in value between you, who may be a veteran at what you're doing, um, you know, and your the cousin who might be brand new. Really, what they're saying is, your job's not that hard. And that's, that's an unfortunate reality. Uh, not that your job isn't hard, but that the, percept, the public perception is that your job is not that hard. Uh, and unfortunately, we have things like HGTV to, to thank for that. Um, you know, there's, there's fix and flip shows on HGTV that make fixing and flipping look super easy. And we all know uh, that it's not. Um, but House Hunters, right, makes your job of helping somebody find a home look easy, right? We only have to show people three houses, 22 minutes plus commercials. We find the house of their dreams. We always get you know, an offer accepted under asking price. Like it, it's a miracle. It works out perfectly every time. It makes your job look not that hard. And when the job isn't that hard, we can trust somebody who is brand new at the thing um, instead of needing somebody who is very experienced. Like doctors, lawyers, though they don't fall into that category, right? We want the experienced doctor as opposed to the guy who is seeing his very first patient, right? Uh, or we want the experienced lawyer uh, instead of the girl who like just passed the bar a week ago and has never represented a client before. So there are industries where experience and expertise, we value it, we look for it, we want it, and if we can afford it, we're going to buy it. Uh, unfortunately, real estate is not one of those things. So, and we're going to talk more about uh, sort of experience and expertise and how that falls in later. Um, but really, what's what it's boiling down to is if all the options are the same, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to to do this. Um, I may as well just use my cousin. Why should I use you? There's no difference between these options, so I may as well just use uh, my cousin. Unfortunate for you. 
um, because we know that they're missing out on some quality, but we have to, we can't change public perception, uh, but we can play to it. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how do we play to it? All right, number three, problems that you might be experiencing, again, because we're not communicating uh, our value in the most effective way. Uh, the dreaded missed call. Uh, there have probably been times in your, uh, in your business, in your career, where you have missed a call from a prospect who may have even left you a message saying, hey, thought you could help me find a house or sell my house. Um, and you call them back like 10, 15 minutes later, maybe 20 minutes later, uh, and they say, sorry, I called somebody else. I found somebody else. Now, do we live in a super impatient, on-demand society world? Yeah, sort of, right? And so we know that there are going to be those people out there that if they can't get this thing immediately, they're going to go over here and seek out this other option so they can get it immediately, right? There are going to be those people. But most of us are willing to wait if we know what is on the other end of that wait. So for example, uh, I like burgers. I know a lot of people do. Um, if we were to compare like the McDonald's burger to the Red Robin burger, right? First of all, we know the Red Robin burger costs more, um, but also it takes longer, right? If I'm going to go in a normal world, if I were able to go in and, and sit down and eat, uh, I would have to go in, I'd have to wait for a table, I'd have to wait to be seated, I'd have to wait for them to take my order, I'd have to wait for the order to be brought to me. Uh, we have to wait a lot longer for that burger than we do if we just went through a quick drive through line uh, at Burger King or McDonald's. So there are times where we're willing to wait longer and pay more if we know that there is a difference in value at the other end of that. Same thing you know, at a theme park. The, the bigger, better roller coaster has the longer line and you're willing to wait in it. Uh, you know, and the, the smaller dinky rides have shorter lines. And if it had a long one, you wouldn't wait in it because it wouldn't be worth the wait. Um, same thing here, right? If, if somebody is, if they've interacted with your marketing, they found you somewhere uh, and they give you a call and they don't wait for your call back, really what they're saying is at the moment that they interacted with your marketing, they didn't get a clear sense of why they should wait for your call back. Uh, I tell people all the time, by the time this class is over, uh, I don't mind if I have a missed call. I hope I have a missed call or two um, from someone who has decided you know, that, that they need our help because I trust that the way that they have interacted with my marketing before or this class or me, they know that by the time they're reaching out, uh, if I'm not able to answer, they can't just call somebody else up who can automatically do the same exact thing that, you know, we can do for them, right? So they're going to give me or us some opportunity uh, to give them a call back. Uh, if you are experiencing that thing where people aren't waiting for your call back, yes, some people are just impatient, but also it's our job to communicate the value up front, essentially giving them a reason to wait for us. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, number four, having a low conversion rate. Now, what does that mean? Different marketing methods are going to have different expected conversion rates, right? If you send out a, uh, a mailer to a neighborhood and you do that over the course of time, you know, a lot of people will tell you that somewhere around a 1% response rate, uh, is a pretty good response rate. Um, if you do a bunch of open houses, uh, we would expect more than a 1% conversion rate. We would expect to convert more than one out of 100 uh, people that are coming through, hopefully. So each, each marketing method is going to have different expected conversion or response rates. The problem that you might be experiencing is that your marketing methods, the, the conversion rate or the response rate for the things that you're doing uh, are even lower than, um, than what would be expected for that, that particular method, right? Uh, so again, if you're, if you're sitting open houses all year long, you know, 50 open houses and you only get one or two clients, that conversion rate is extremely low. If you're sending out mailers month after month after month and barely anyone is calling, uh, the conversion rate is, is way too low. Uh, and we have to start looking at what is the strength of the message that we're actually putting out there, right? Because that's what people are responding to. 
you give them a message, you give them a call to action, and if it's not inducing them to call or reach out or follow up with you, we have to look at the strength of the message that's being put out there. Um, now, we've worked with several, uh, several clients, several agents who say, when I sit down for that 30 or 60 minute consultation, that seller's consultation, that buyer's consultation, I lay everything out, I show them what I can do, uh, you know, I have a very professional presentation, I can win them over, uh, you know, my conversion rate for those things are extremely high. Their problem is they're not getting enough of those opportunities. Um, you know, people saying, I, say, I mail stuff out all the time, no one ever calls. Uh, I tried doing social media stuff, uh, it doesn't capture people's attention. Uh, I sit open houses and there are people that I swear should totally be my client. They don't have an agent and they're looking, but for some reason, I didn't earn the opportunity to sit down with them for 30 minutes to wow them. That's when we have to look at, are you quickly and effectively sharing, hey, this is the thing that you're going to get with me that you're not going to get with somebody else, because that's how you earn those longer full length consultation opportunities. So that's what we're going to try to do. Uh, let me clear this for a second. All right. Number five. So this is the last on the problem list. If your business is all or mostly referral based, uh, this is on the problem list. Are referrals great? Absolutely. And I don't want to diminish that. Uh, and so I want to speak to that for a second. Referrals are fantastic for a lot of reasons. One, uh, and probably the main one, it's an indication that you're good at what you do, right? If you're not getting, if you've done this for a while and you're not getting referrals, there might be a concern with the quality of the service that you're providing. If you are getting referrals, then you can probably feel pretty confident that people feel good about the service that you're providing. That's awesome. Uh, why else are referrals great? One, it's a little easier for us in terms of converting that person. They sort of come pre-sold. Uh, they're borrowing somebody else's trust. Um, you know, they're, so they're easier to convert. They, they usually cost less to attain in terms of getting new clients. Um, there, there's a lot of reasons why referrals are fantastic, and I don't want referrals to go away. My concern, though, is for folks where your business is all or mostly referral, unless you have all the business that you want or need, right? If it's all referral and you're just drowning in clients, like, cool, then like, you're great. Most of the time, people say that my business is all or mostly referral, but I'm also not quite where I want to be. Um, now, I know that there's programs and methods out there to facilitate referrals and all of that, and that's great, like, keep doing that. I want to add in a second piece because if your business is all or mostly referral, the thing that you're not necessarily that great at is marketing yourself. What it means is you're not great at convincing a stranger, somebody who has never met you and never met anybody that you worked with, uh, convincing them that they should work with you. Uh, and that's not a great thing, right? There, there is a comfort and a safety that comes with being able to, um, basically hunt for your hunt for your own food and not just rely on referrals being brought to you uh it stabilizes right so a lot of times there's swings oh i get three referrals oh i got none for three months uh if you're able to capture your own there's a lot of benefits to that uh, but again if if your business is all or mostly referral right now and you have tried to get your own business and it hasn't really worked uh it's it's the equivalent of trying to fill up a bucket of water um, but there's a hole in the bottom of that bucket, right? Your message is just not strong enough to convince a brand new person uh, that they should work with you. Um, and it sort of goes back to that last piece I was talking about with the, you know, the, the conversion rate. If we, if we look at like the open house thing, you're meeting strangers during that open house, people who don't know you, don't know anybody that you've worked with. Um, but where did people just come from? Like they came from a different open house, right? And they're, they're probably going to go to another one. So they're going to meet a couple of agents that day. If you're all essentially producing the same pitch as to, hey, this is why you should answer my call on Monday morning. Uh, and we're going to talk about what that is in a, in a couple of minutes here in, in terms of what, you know, what, that, what the pitch is that everybody else is saying. But just wrap your head around this at the moment. If you're saying the same exact thing as all of your competitors, your, your potential client has no idea who they should pick. If you can develop a message that stands out from the other people that they might meet that day, 
it increases your likelihood uh, that they're willing to follow up with you come Monday morning. So here is your first opportunity to, we're gonna test out the strength of your current marketing message. So uh, whether you are on a laptop and you can type it out, whether you have a pen and pad uh, nearby and you can write it out, I want it to be physically written out, whether it's typed out or written out, your answer to the question, why should a client work with you, right? So imagine, you can imagine the open house scenario um, where somebody comes in, they, they are somebody who is about to sell or about to buy, right? They're looking for representation and they ask you point blank, why should I pick you? So take 30 seconds, I'm gonna shut up and take a drink for a second um, and write out your answer to that question. Don't post in the chat box because I don't want um, I don't want them shared. What we're going to do is uh, over the next uh, section here, we're going to we're going to test the strength of that answer by looking at common things that people do um, that are not necessarily as effective as we think, and we're going to sort of systematically cross stuff off from your answer. The idea being that if you have anything that survives the cross out process, that should probably be the message that you go with. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times we wind up crossing off everything. So. This is where I'll shut up for a couple of seconds. Write down your answer. If somebody asks you point blank, why should I choose you and not somebody else? Uh, one sentence and uh, we will we'll go from there. And I'm gonna clear this while you're doing that. Ten seconds. All right. Whatever you have written down, uh, I always operate on the assumption whatever you wrote down first is probably the thing that you would say first. So that's going to be the thing that we assess. So we're going to talk about ways that people go about attracting new business and, and we're going to see where it works and where it sort of falls apart. Uh, so, number one, we've probably heard this phrase that it is all about relationships, right? If you want to get new business, it's all about building relationships. You establish a relationship with somebody over time and then they, you know, they feel good about you and they choose to work with you. A lot of people have heard this. A lot of people have accepted this advice. A lot of people have passed on this advice. Can it work? Absolutely, right? It is possible to meet somebody at an open house uh, and they're not ready to move for six months and you facilitate this relationship with them over six months and at the end of that six months they're like hey it's time for us to move you've been great all along we think we're gonna work with you cool can totally work um, are there ways that it falls short absolutely so let's talk about a couple of those one is it possible to friend yourself out of a client absolutely what does that mean it means that you essentially became too close and friendly with this person that now either like they don't want to jeopardize this great friendship that you've now established together. Uh, maybe they don't want to open up their personal financial situation to you because we've become friends. Uh, I don't necessarily want you as my service provider. So it's possible to friend yourself out of a client as you're attempting to build this relationship with a prospect. Um, even if you do it perfectly, even if you sort of toe that line perfectly, uh, we don't become too friendly, but I'm there sort of every step of the way, you know, while they're making their decision, uh, are they still guaranteed to pick you? Absolutely not. And we know this because every potential client out there, they either know zero realtors um, or they know like eight, right? So even if you do things perfectly, uh, you know, and, and you're top of mind for that, you're not the only one that's top of mind. Um, so even if you do, even if you build this relationship and everything goes great, they can still choose somebody else, especially if you've not given them a specific reason that they should pick you. Uh, one more way that this can fall short. If, um, you know, there are some people out there who all of a sudden realize that they need to move quickly, right? They need to, uh, you know, a, a job change or school change, something happened and oh shoot, we need to buy or sell right now. We're getting evicted from our landlord, landlord selling the house, whatever. Um, 
they don't have the benefit of vetting you for this six month process to decide if they want to work with you or not. They have to make a decision right now. So if your only way of going about getting new business is to establish this long-term relationship and hope that at the end of it, they choose you, again, can it work? Yes. Are we missing out on opportunities along the way? Absolutely. Now, I always want to be clear. This is not to say that you should not be establishing relationships with people. Uh, you absolutely should be establishing relationships with the clients that you are working with and after you're done working with them. Uh, I know we have people on here today uh, you know, that are in title and mortgage and uh, part of what they do is build relationships with agents like yourself over time um, so that you can continue to work together. Relationships are great and there can be a lot of benefits to that. I'm talking only about the moment before they decide to give you a shot the first time, right? If you work with a mortgage company or a title company and you establish a relationship with them over time and you continue to work with them, that's fantastic. But each of those companies, each of those entities, and you when it comes to other prospects, should be able to convey very quickly up front why essentially they should give you a shot uh, or pick you without having to forgive the, the reality, but suck up to them over the course of six months. You should be able to convey now why they should pick you, even if their choice isn't gonna be until later down the road. Uh, oh, sorry, not, we're gonna call that 1A. Uh, let's, we'll just clear that. 1B is the whole idea that people do business with people that they know, like, and trust, right? Obviously, it's very related to um, the whole relationship building thing. Uh, people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. Now, if I gave you the opportunity and I said, hey, there's this new mortgage person that, you know, you've never met before. Maybe some of you don't know, um, you know, the, the companies that are represented here today. And I said, what would you want to know about this company or this person before deciding to work with them? And a lot of times the questions that come to mind are, well, how long have they been in business, right? What are their rates? What products do they have available? Uh, how good are they at serving their customers? How, how reliable are they? How available are they? Those are all the things that come to mind. It's never like, well, are they married, right? What kind of movies do they like? Do they like cats or dogs? Um, do they have kids? Do their kids play soccer? Do they go to their kids' soccer games? Those are not the things that come to mind first when we're choosing if we want to work with a service provider or not. And yet, that is most commonly the advice that we're given, right? Especially by, say, your social media folks. Um, you know, you have to let people know that you're a real person. So post on Facebook that you're out to dinner with your spouse uh, or that you're going to the movie when, when the movies are open, um, you know, or that you're at your kid's soccer game. Let people get to know you as a, as a real person so that they can feel comfortable with you and they'll know you and they'll like you and they'll trust you and they'll choose to do business with you. Not necessarily, first of all, uh, the more you share about yourself personally, the more you run the risk of like rubbing somebody the wrong way if somebody doesn't agree with something that you happen to believe in. So that's not necessarily great. Uh, but also you're not the only person that they know, right? You're not the only person that they know and therefore you're probably not the only person that they like. So again, even if you do this great, it's not a guarantee that they're going to choose you. So here's what you actually, I, I do believe in this phrase, but not the way that we have come to know it. What we need to know is the problem that you can solve for somebody. I can't hire you until I know what problem you can solve for me. It's as simple as that. I need to like the outcome that you're going to uh, produce for me at the end of us working together. And I also need to be willing to tolerate the method by which you say we are going to get there. And the trust part is exactly what we think, right? I need to trust that you can deliver on solving this problem, producing this outcome in the way that we're gonna get there. Now, the problem with real estate agents is pretty much you all solve the same problem. I can help you buy or sell a house. The outcome that you produce uh, or that you promise to produce is the same. We're going to buy a house for the best price uh, that's right for you. We're going to sell your house for the best price. The method is pretty much the same, right? If we're going to buy houses, I'm going to get to know what you want. I'm going to set you up on the search. We're going to go look at the ones that you want. We're going to put an offer in, right? 
everybody solves the same problem, produces the same outcome, has the same method to get there. Uh, and it's why the iBuyers were able to come in and disrupt the market a little bit and get market share because they solved a different problem by virtue of having a different method, right? Choose your closing date, no, uh, no showings, no open houses, you can change your closing date, blah, 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 yada, yada. It works, right? It solves a different problem. They have a different method of getting there. Um, and that's why they were able to come in and capture market attention. Now, do we know that it costs more? Yeah. Do they trick some people with that? Yeah. But there are still people who know what the value is and are willing to pay that because the problem that they solve or the method by which to get there is something that's enticing to them. It's as simple as that. So I like to use a quick example outside of real estate because I think it helps really drive it home. Let's say we had two health professionals, both of whom claim that they can help you lose weight, right? So solving the same problem, the outcome is the same, uh, you'll be more fit, you'll have lost weight at the end, but they have different methods, right? One of those people is a personal trainer who says, uh, in order to lose weight, we are going to do a 5 a.m. two-hour boot camp Monday through Friday, every day before work, uh, and at the end of a month, you will have lost weight. Some people are like, hell no, right? Not for me. Uh, the people who say yes to that are usually like former military, uh, former high-level athletes. Those are the people that are used to waking up at 5 a.m. doing the workout thing. Uh, most people are going to be like, no thanks, not for me. The other health person that we have here, I can help you lose weight. Um, the only thing you have to do is take this pill, right? One, one pill every morning for 30 days. At the end of that, you'll lose weight. Now, some people really love the convenience and they'll totally buy into that. If you're anything like me, you're like, what the hell is in that pill? Uh, that's just going to eat away at my body. Uh, like no thanks. Right? So if we're not willing to tolerate the method, then we don't really care, right? We're going to find some, uh, some other option. But again, Real estate agents basically all do this the same. You advertise that you solve the same problem, buying, buying or selling a house. The outcome is the same and everybody pretty much has the same method. Uh, and when you do all of that the same as the consumer, I can't know which option I am supposed to pick. So we're going to come back to this. We're going to touch on this again in a second, um, but it is directly related to uh, the next couple of things that we're going to talk about. Um, because here's where we start looking at the actual content. So the, that first piece was more about our approach, right? How do we approach the idea of getting new business? Um, these next couple, we're going to, to look specifically at the content of the message that you're putting out there, that answer to the question, why should I pick you? Now, most people are going to start by touting their fantastic customer service, right? And what do we mean by customer service? We mean, um, being available, being responsive, helping people get the best, uh, the best house for the best price, selling your house, you know, the fastest for the best price, educating you every step of the way, um, you know, holding your hand, leading you, uh, all of those things that are essentially just customer service related. And we claim that we're going to do that better than our competition. And that's why people should pick us. Now, do we know people out there who are not good customer service providers, essentially not good real estate agents. You'd probably be lying if you said that you didn't know anybody who's not good. Um, but even if we look at those folks who are not good, um, they're not good customer service providers or they're flaky, right? They're not responsive, they're not available. Um, even if we look at those folks, when that person is trying to convince a new client to work with them, do you think they admit that they're not any good? No. I've never gone into an open, and sometimes I just like going to open houses for fun, um, but I've never gone into an open house and somebody has been like, you know, I would love it if we could work together, but to be honest, like, I'm not real great at this customer service thing. Uh, I'm not super available. Um, you know, sometimes I, I accidentally take three days to get back to you. Like, no one admits that. <laughs> so even if we know in our heart of hearts that we are better than other folks at this thing, it doesn't matter because everybody is saying and claiming the same thing. Now you can say, well, I have reviews to back it up. That's a little bit helpful. Not having reviews is not great, right? But simply having them, even the bad service providers seem to fall on, you know, a couple of positive reviews. Um, 
So if we're convincing a brand new person who has never met us to use us and we say, I'm going to take care of you better than anybody else can. And then they go meet somebody else who's going to say the same exact thing. So unfortunately, anything that is customer service related in your, in your answer, in your marketing pitch needs to be crossed off. Not because it's not a good thing to deliver on, but because it is not a believable message that stands out. If you tell me you're the best and somebody else tells me they're the best, I don't know which one of you is telling me the truth. Um, so here's a quick way to test if it falls into this category or not. Would somebody, would the majority of your competitors willingly admit the opposite, right? So if you say, I'm extremely responsive and available, would the majority of your competitors willingly admit that they are not extremely responsive and available? Probably not. No one is going to willingly admit the opposite. Um, contrast that with you saying, hey, I do listings at 1%. Would the majority of people not admit that they do listings at 1%? Probably, right? So that wouldn't be crossed off. It's not the thing that we want to compete on, but I'm just sort of uh, putting out there that there are things that would not be crossed off. But all the customer service stuff, we have to get rid of. Um, it is a minimum expectation, right? N no one ever chooses to go to a restaurant because they promise to, you know, hey, whatever, order, whatever food you order, that's what we're going to bring you. If we screw it up, we'll fix it. Uh, we'll charge you the price that's listed on our menu. We won't give you food poisoning, right? These are all just minimum expectations that if you don't deliver, you'll lose business, but the promise of doing these minimum expectation things does not attract new business for you. So anything that's customer service related in your answer, cross it off. Number three, I like to call this the, uh, the holy trinity of business values. Honesty, integrity, and professionalism. Would anybody willingly admit that they don't possess all three? I haven't found someone yet. You let me know if you ever do. Um, again, these are minimum. We expect our service provider to be honest, to have integrity, uh, and to be professional. So let's talk about these in reverse order. Professionalism. Um, again, if, if someone were unprofessional, let, let's say we were doing this class in person and I'm standing in front of you uh, and I dressed very unprofessionally uh, or I had holes in my clothes or stains in my clothes or I smelled funny uh, or I was just sort of generally unkempt or I was swearing up a storm. Uh, if there was something about me that was unprofessional, might that turn you off from me? Might it make you listen less to me? Probably, possibly. Um, but, you know, as of yet, no one has ever just like given me their credit card and been like, take all of my money, like simply because I was able to show up and dress myself like an adult, right? Just because I, I present myself professionally, that it's a minimum expectation, right? Uh, integrity, same thing. So integrity being uh, doing the right thing for your client, the best interest of your client, even when technically you can get away with not doing that. Um, so again, I like to use a, a non-real estate example. If somebody, if a, in, uh, a car repair shop, a, a mechanic came to you and said, hey, I know mechanics get a bad rap. They're constantly recommending repairs for your car that your car doesn't actually need. I promise we'll never do that. Come to our shop. How many of you are automatically taking your car there? Probably not, right? Because everybody makes that promise. And how do I know that they're telling the truth? Um, now, if they said something to the effect of, uh, we'll never recommend a repair for your car that your car doesn't actually need. And to prove it, um, we'll give you the old part after, after we replace it. You can take it to another mechanic. If they say that it didn't need to be replaced, you can come back to us. You can keep the new one and we'll fully refund you. So basically you get the new part for free. Now, am I giving that place a shot? Probably, right? Uh, because they're, they're, sent, they're putting a guarantee behind it, one that they're, they're technically now legally bound to, right? Um, they're not just making a, a vague promise, right? They're, they're putting something tangible behind it. If there's one thing that indicates why referrals are easier than getting your own business. It's this, right? If a friend comes to me and says, 
hey, I've been taking my car to this place for four years uh, and they never recommend, they've never recommended a repair on my car, right? So clearly they're not trying to sell me anything. They're waiting for something to actually break. Cool, right? That referral is super strong, right? Somebody already had that experience and they can come tell me about it and I can trust that experience. But when that mechanic comes to me and says, hey, we never recommend a repair that your car doesn't need, I don't know whether to believe him or not. And that's why a lot of folks re rely on referrals because when our past client or our friend sells us, it's very believable. When we try to sell ourselves with the exact same message, it doesn't work. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, honesty, again, I, I've never come across anybody who willingly admitted that they're not honest, but there is a difference between honesty and brutal honesty. And so I wanna pull this down for a second. All right, this is the business card of the person who cuts my hair. Uh, she calls herself the uncensored stylist. Uh, I'm going to read it. I'll show it to you. So her business card says, you have this card because someone thinks your hair looks like shit. It doesn't have to be that way. Book now. Right? That, is, that is her business card. Now, there is a difference between honesty and brutal honesty. She falls into that brutal honesty category. Let me give you one or two other examples of her, and then let's talk about how she sort of fits into all this. Uh, I have witnessed her tell people no, that you know, the, the haircut that they're requesting or the, the you know, dyeing their hair or whatever. Um, she's like, nope, that's going to look stupid on your face. Uh, and I don't want you to go tell people uh, that, uh, that you got that done here, basically. Um, you know, I've, I've witnessed people walk into her office for the very first time, her salon for the very first time, and her be like, oh my gosh, who did that to your hair? Like, thank God you're here. We're going to fix that for you. Um, so there, there's this element of literally being uncensored and brutally honest. But the question comes back to that very first thing we talked about in this section. Does it solve a different problem? Does she solve a different problem by the way that she interacts with her clients? And the answer is yes. She solves the problem I've had my entire life. Do I know for sure that the haircut that I have on my head right now is the best one for me? No, but I at least know that it's not stupid. And I have had lots of stupid decisions when it comes to my hair in the past, right? If we look at my junior high photo, uh, where you know every guy had his hair parted down the middle, uh, and my friends looked good with it, and I looked really stupid. Uh, and then in high school, when everybody had their you know their hair dyed and frosted tips like Justin Timberlake, uh, my friends looked good with it, and I looked really stupid. So I have made lots of decisions because of what was in at the time that just didn't look good for my face. I know if I go to Candace and I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about changing my hairstyle, she will not let me change it to something that looks stupid for my face. Um, so she solves a different problem. She has a different approach um, and it works, right? Does she turn some people off? Yes. Uh, the people that go to her, do they become very loyal to her? Absolutely. I drive a very long way to get to her to make sure that I don't come out looking stupid, right? Uh, so again, honesty, integrity, professionalism, if you have any of those things in your answer, um, we're going to have to cross those off because everybody is going to claim that they have those things. And therefore, from a marketing message standpoint, it just doesn't work. It do, it's not strong enough. It doesn't attract attention. Uh, I don't know whether to believe you or not. And again, that's why referrals work better than us getting our own business. All right. Um, last piece here in terms of uh, sort of mistakes that we make. Now, I include this one for a couple of reasons. One, because it's important for you to know the, um, the take home message from this thing I'm about to share with you. Um, but I'm also the, the nerd that reads consumer psychology marketing research for a couple of reasons. One, I like it. Uh, two, I obviously want to do the best job that I can. But three, I like when research backs up what it is that I'm trying to teach you. I never want to be accused of being the guy that like, oh, that's his opinion. And it makes sense. But this other guy has this other opinion. Uh, and therefore, ah, six, one, half dozen, another. Everything that I put out there uh, I like to have backed by some level of research that like, we know that this is actually 
how it works. It's not just sort of fad of the day. It's not just my, um, my anecdotal opinion on what works or does not. So there was a research study that was done where they built this website uh, and they had two couches for sale on this website and they had a bunch of kids, college kids go to the site and decide which of the two couches that they wanted to purchase. Now the two couches were described as being exactly the same in every way you can imagine, size, shape, color, price, pattern, fabric, everything. The only difference was that this first one was listed as uh, more durable, meaning a little bit longer lasting, and this other one was listed as being softer, meaning probably a little bit more comfortable to sit on right now. Left to their own device, uh, college kids surprisingly actually leaned toward uh, this durable one, 58% to 42%. So if we round slightly, we're talking about like three out of five uh, versus two out of five. Um, now, what does this tell us about branding and marketing? Literally, absolutely nothing. So they did it again, new group of people. They added in a couple extra options. So now we have four options that are listed as having this durable quality but there's something inferior about each of these three compared to this one. Either, um, you know, the, let's say the second one was exactly the same, but it cost way more, which makes no sense. Um, or, you know, the third one maybe cost exactly the same, but it was way smaller, which doesn't make sense. There was something that made, you know, those three additional options clearly inferior to that original one. And so uh, consumers aren't dumb, right? If there's a direct comparison, and there's no redeeming quality about a particular option. We're never going to pick it. So 0% of the time did anybody pick uh, any of those three additional options. But then a weird thing happens. Only 22% wind up picking this original durable option that initially 58% of people picked, and now 78% picked this soft one. What does this tell us about marketing and branding? When there's a whole bunch of options and they all look the same, human nature is to gravitate toward the one that stands out, the one that's different. It's as simple as that. Now we know, and it's almost like regardless of quality, right? So we know, we know that this one is actually a pretty solid option. We know it's better than all of these three, right? At worst, it's the second best option on the table. We don't actually know where that one falls at all. It could actually be the worst out of all five, and it doesn't matter. Human nature is to gravitate toward the option that stands out, that is different. Um, now, part of it is, you know, evolutionarily, we're, we're sort of designed to pick out sort of the thing that doesn't belong, the thing that sort of stands out. Um, there's a, a scarcity element that comes into play. Well, if there's lots of options that are like this, but there's only this one option over here, it becomes scarcer and therefore it becomes more valuable. Um, but the take home message here is in order to get your phone to ring, if you're following along that outline, if, in order to get your phone to ring the first time from a brand new prospect, it is better to be different at what you do than it is to be any good at what you do. Which is really disappointing because it means that it's not the best service providers that are necessarily attracting the most business. Uh, it's the ones who market themselves the best. And obviously that's what we're talking about today is how do we market ourselves the most effectively. Um, great customer service will earn you referrals, but it will not earn you business from strangers. Being different, standing out, having a unique value that you effectively communicate, that is what effectively earns um, the attention at, at first of a brand new prospect who doesn't know you, right? So it is better to be different and to communicate that difference than it is to talk about how good you are. So the years of experience that you have, you know, the, the dozens of positive reviews that you have, because other people have positive reviews too. Other people have, you know, years of experience too. Uh, and so you fall into this muddy water of, well, 16 years and 15 years and, and 12 reviews versus eight reviews, whatever. Um, yes, it's good. Uh, it's good to have those things, uh, but it doesn't separate you as much as you think. It is better to be different than it is to be good at what you do in terms of attracting new business. Uh, I know that's sort of unfortunate, but 
<laughs> it is what it is. Uh, if anybody has a question, feel free to pop that in real quick. I'm going to take two seconds and take a drink. Um, and at this point, either um, all of your marketing message has been crossed off, at which point uh, we absolutely need to figure out what we're going to replace that with, or potentially there is something that you have um, that has remained that has not been crossed off all the customer service stuff, all the honesty, integrity stuff, all the years of experience and that sort of a thing. Um, something other than that that remains. And if so, that should be the marketing message that you put out there because that's the thing that is probably the most unique uh, or valuable with what you have. All right. So now that we know, can you get the stylist number? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, I have gotten uh, Candace more business than you would think just by bringing her up um, uh, in these classes. Um, I will, I'll, I'll take a picture and we can just send it out uh, to the entire, uh, entire list for everybody. Um, and so, like, that's literally my point. How many of you were necessarily coming into this today thinking like, I need a new hairstylist? Um, most of the business that I've gotten her, people weren't thinking like, I need a new hairstylist. And then she comes along and she's different and she capture people, she captures people's attention. And now all of a sudden we want to give her a try and we didn't even know we were in the market for that. Uh, that is the benefit of being different because honestly, you don't even know how good she is, right? You can look at my hair, but a guy's haircut is simple. Uh, we don't even know how good she is. And yet she gets business simply because her marketing is effective. And that's why I use her as an example. Um, all right. So now that we know what not to do, let's talk about how branding actually works. Um, and what we can do about it. So there's, there's three different pieces to this, right? There's advertising, there's marketing, and then there's branding. Advertising, if you look up the dictionary definition, is literally just like, it's an announcement, right? If I announce, hey, I'm a real estate agent, you're just advertising, you're just announcing um, who you are and what you do. If, if there's a sign that says open house this way, it's just an advertisement of what the thing is. Um, if you're the only one in town, then all you need is to advertise yourself, right? If you're the only gas station in a hundred mile stretch, all you need is one sign that says gas this exit and you, that's it. Uh, you're not competing with anyone. Um, we have come across and worked with many uh, agents and folks in other industries where they were in this small town and they're like, all I did was put up a billboard in the center of town uh, and I had more business than I knew what to do. But there wasn't a lot of competition. I just needed to let people know that I existed. Cool, that doesn't work when you're in Metro Phoenix um, or any other large metro area for that matter. So then we start going over to marketing. And so now we're like, uh, I, need to, I need to say something a little warmer, fuzzy or catchier, right? So instead of, uh, I can help you buy a house, uh, it's I can help you find your dream home, which is warmer, fuzzy or catchier, um, but it's not proprietary to you, right? Any agent can use that line. Uh, instead of saying open house this way, we say uh, come spy on your neighbors, right? It's a little, it's a little funnier, catchier, but literally anybody hosting an open house can use that same line. Um, when you have a brand, it means, uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not worried about colors, logos, designs, fonts, all of that stuff matters about that much. The only thing that matters for our purposes is do you have a unique value and can you, um, uh, what the, I'm blanking. Can you, wow, can you communicate it effectively? That was not the right time to blank. Uh, do you have a unique value and can you communicate it effectively to others? Um, when you have something that is unique to you and then you market that out, other people can't copy it and you can stand out above the white noise. I see so many people who spend money on Facebook advertising that's like, I'm gonna treat you like you're my best friend or I'm gonna take such good care of you or I'm always available or whatever the thing is. And it's just this generic message that they're putting money and effort behind. Um, chronologically speaking, any business that develops usually starts with that brand development. What is gonna be our secret sauce, right? What is going to be the thing that makes us unique? Um, you know, the world doesn't need another pen, so if I'm gonna, make a pen company, 
uh, that pen had better be different than everybody else's pen somehow. Um, without that, you don't really have a business, but I see a lot of people who have been in this, in your business for years and they continue to advertise, they continue to send out mailers, they continue to sit open houses and they don't have a message that is theirs. All right. They don't have this, which again is the equivalent of filling up a bucket of water with a hole in the bottom. You can get some, it'll work a little bit, but chronologically, you're better off plugging that hole and figuring out what makes you unique and then putting that behind all of your advertising and marketing efforts. So let's talk about what brand actually means. Let me write this out and then I'll explain what it says. All right, your brand is equal to the combination of two things. Uh, one is what we call the brand promise. It's the thing that you say about yourself. It's this piece right here, the promise that you make to a particular group of people about the problem that you can solve for them. Uh, and the second component is your reputation. So essentially what other people are saying about you. So again, first piece is the brand promise, what you say and how you market yourself. Uh, and the second piece is your reputation or what other people are saying about you. Now, a lot of people I know, uh, a lot of agents that I come across, a lot of agents that attend this class, they have a good reputation, right? Um, you know, it's possible to have a reputation that's worth zero. It, like you're so bad at your job that your reputation is essentially worth zero. Um, and so it doesn't matter how great your brand promise is, right? It's the equivalent of getting people, you attract people to come into your store, but then you, you know, you have nothing that they want to buy. It doesn't even matter. Um, but a lot of people I work with, um, or the, again, that, that attend the class, have a stellar reputation. So they get referrals. People are saying good things about them, but they have a wildly generic brand promise, right? I can help anyone buy or sell a house. Uh, first time home buyers, uh, you know, buying, selling, investing, it doesn't matter. I can help you with all your real estate needs. It's this, it's this terribly generic promise um, that is not particularly strong. If we can strengthen it, now all of a sudden your business grows exponentially, right? If you're getting 10 referrals a year into your business because of the quality of the service that you provide, that's fantastic. I don't want those 10 to go away. I want you to be able to add 10 of your own that you can capture on your own. And that's where this brand promise comes in. Now, we can strengthen this brand promise in one of two ways. We can either specialize in a particular group of people or we can solve a different problem. The people category is easier to wrap our head around. So we're gonna start there. Um, but it's also the one that has more drawbacks. So let's, let's start with the easy part. Uh, it's really easy to say that you specialize in first-time home buyers, in veterans, in you know teachers, doctors, nurses, first responders, uh, in people that are downsizing, in people that are relocating. Um, you know, it's you can say that you specialize in estate sales uh, or you know working with investors. There, there's no shortage of people that you can claim that you specialize in. And if I let's say I'm a first-time home buyer. If I come across you and you say, I'm a first time home buyer specialist, and then I come across two other people who say, I can help anyone buy or sell a house, I'm going to gravitate toward the person who specializes in the category that I'm in. It's just, it's human nature, right? But there's a couple of drawbacks. One, if you specialize in a particular group of people, a lot of folks fear that it means they're going to miss out on others, right? I don't want to specialize just in first time home buyers because there's so many other people that I can help and I don't want them not to choose me. The other drawback is uh, if you say you're a first time home buyer specialist and now you're up against another first time home buyer specialist, like it, it helps separate you a little bit, but it doesn't help separate you fully. Um, so simply, or, or sometimes we make the mistake of trying to say that we specialize in like five different things, which literally undercuts the meaning of the word specialization. Um, so a lot of folks don't necessarily want to just simply specialize in a group of people. The, the more effective route is to solve a different problem within the real estate transaction world um, that 
ideally has a broader appeal, but something that, that we do that other folks don't. Um, so again, the iBuyer solves a different problem, right? Uh, choose your closing date, that's solving a different problem. Um, no showings in your, of your house, no open houses, uh, solves a different problem. Uh, let's talk about a couple of individual agents that, uh, that I've come across that we've worked with who uh, solve a different problem and by virtue of that they, they stand out. One agent that uh, we worked with, um, he said he was really good at the simultaneous close, right? So if you're moving uh, locally, you're trying to sell one house and move and buy, buy and move into the next one, uh, he said he was really good at timing that so that you could seamlessly go from one to the other. Now, just claiming that he's really good at that, I don't know whether, as the, as the potential client, I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. But he put a guarantee behind it, and he said, if for some reason I screw it up, and your first house closes before your next one is ready, I'll pay for you and your family to stay in an extended stay hotel until that next, uh, you know, your house is ready to move into. Now, all of a sudden, he solves the problem of what if this doesn't go the way that we want it to go, right? And his thought is, even if I have to do that one out of 10 times, because nine out of 10, I'm going to nail it, even if I have to do it one out of 10 times and pay out of pocket, the amount of extra business that it's going to attract for me is more than going to account for, you know, the, the couple of times that I might have to shell out a couple of bucks uh, to deliver on this guarantee. Uh, and sure enough for him, we worked together at the end of 2018, uh, and by the end of 2019, he had doubled his previous, you know, best record year. Uh, it attracted more business um, simply because it solved a problem and he put a guarantee behind it. Now, there's lots of other ways that we can solve problems too, based on your background, your experience. Uh, there's another agent that we worked with that uh, she had 15 years of fix and flip experience before she decided, I just want to work with buyers and sellers now. So, you know, long story short, we take that experience and we make it valuable for her consumer now. So if you're selling a house that's not up to date, one, she can protect you from the low ball investor offer because she knows what it would be. Two, if you want to update your house before selling it, she knows where to put that money so that it can increase the value of your house most effectively because that's literally what she did for years. Uh, if you're a buyer and you're buying a house that's not up to date, she can more quickly and accurately tell you, um, you know, how much money it's probably going to cost to get it looking like you want. Her experience becomes a value for you as the client that another agent can't duplicate because they don't have that same experience. Um, there's there's a, a number of other examples that I could give you related to solving different problems, but I'm, I'm looking at the time and I want to make sure that we wrap up on time. Um, after we sort of officially wrap up, uh, while you guys are, are scheduling your calls and that sort of a thing, if you have specific questions or want other examples about this right here, uh, I can do that at the end. I just want to make sure that we get through uh, these last couple of pieces uh, and, and wrap everybody up on time. So hopefully this makes sense. Again, you can specialize in a group of people and that will work a little bit. If you can solve a different problem and communicate that effectively, then you wind up standing out and it's easier for people to choose to work with you. And it's also your job to maintain a stellar repu uh, reputation, obviously. All right. Um, let's say we have three entities here all three of whom claim that they are the strongest and they can make you stronger too. How do I know which one is telling me the truth? How do I know which one is the strongest and how do I know which one can make me stronger? I have no idea, so I don't know which one to pick. If I tell you that these three entities, one is a cockroach, one is an ant, one is a human, um, and they all claim that they're the strongest, which one is telling the truth? Now, most people jump to the ant because they're like, well, relative to its own body weight, it can lift the most, which is true. But a cockroach is the only one that can survive a nuclear bomb, which is super gross, right? They're already disgusting and that makes them even more disgusting. Um, but a human is the only one out of this list that can survive getting hit by a shoe. So in its own way, it becomes the strongest. Uh, we can add one to the list, right? When a plane crashes, what's the only thing that survives? The black box, right? So each of these entities become the strongest in their own way. 
if we have a generic message of I'm the strongest, I can make you stronger too, it doesn't resonate, right? If we say I can help anyone buy or sell a house, it doesn't resonate. Once you say I can help teach you how to survive a plane crash, I can teach you how to survive a nuclear bomb, uh, I can teach you how to lift a, a hundred times your own body weight. Um, a couple of things happen. One, we no longer have to compete on price, right? This guy can charge whatever he wants relative to this guy. It doesn't matter. They're not solving the same problem. They're not doing the same thing. Um, if I call this guy and he doesn't answer, uh, I have to wait for his call back. I can't go call this guy uh, because they're going to, they can't solve the same problem, right? So if you're following along in that outline, number two says, in the absence of that differentiated value, right? Basically, in the absence of explaining what I can do that somebody else cannot do, price wins, right? The discount is going to win. The lower commission rate is going to win. Uh, whoever answers the phone fastest is going to win. When you do something that somebody else does not or cannot do and you communicate that, you no longer have to compete on price and you, you earn the opportunity uh, for them to essentially wait for you to get back to them, right? Again, in the absence of that, price is probably going to win. Now, if we do this branding thing effectively, um, it can earn you what I call a proactive referral. Now, a reactive referral is when you're out to dinner with your friends and somebody says, oh, we're thinking about moving soon. And the friend says, oh, we just moved. Our, our real estate agent was great. Uh, I'll give you her number. Cool. I had to say something out loud. My friend gave me the recommendation. It's kind of like when you go on Facebook and you're like, hey, I'm about to move. Anybody have any realtor recommendations? And 247 comments later, uh, you know, they have 247 different recommendations. That's a reactive referral. A proactive referral is, um, Patrick, I see uh, I, somebody can mail that out to you or we can mail it out uh, afterwards. Um, a proactive referral is when there is something unique about what you are offering and it makes people go tell other people in that maybe in their same category about it. So we worked with one agent uh, a couple of years ago who she didn't just specialize in first time home buyers. She specialized in perennial renters who never thought that they could be a homeowner. And she's like, I can show them how, if they're willing to work, I can make it happen. And I'm willing to work with just this group of people. The first time she makes that promise to that person and actually delivers and gets them in a house, do you think that that client knows lots of wealthy friends who are already living in mansions? Or do they probably have lots of other perennial renter friends? Birds of a feather tend to flock together, right? Um, so the first time that that friend is like, wait a minute, we work at the same place, we make the same amount of money, how did you get into a house, right? It, 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 it fosters that communication a lot faster. So it actually helps with referrals, um, but it also allows somebody to go tell other people about what it is that you can do. Um, same thing with the simultaneous close thing, right? If they know another family that is worried about the timing of that, they can go and be like, hey, I know you guys were thinking about moving. You should work with this guy because, you know, his guarantee totally protects you guys. Like you're never going to be out of the house. Uh, if you do that correctly, you can earn that proactive referral. Um, just doing a great job can earn you that recommendation, that, that reactive referral later. But no one is, I shouldn't say no one, it is very, very rare that someone is just going to go tell the whole world uh, about you just sort of successfully doing your job as expected as a real estate agent. Do something different, and then people talk about you a little bit more. Last piece, um, and it's sort of a somber note to end on, so I apologize, but the opposite of having that brand, in the absence of being able to communicate, this is what makes me different, this is what I can do for you that my competitors cannot, the opposite of that is begging and bragging. Now, most folks don't really want to do either one of these. They don't want to have to brag about like, I'm so awesome. You're going to get, you know, such good care with me. Uh, look how long I've been doing this. I'm so good. Look at my track record. Look at me. Look at me. 
It's weird, no one likes doing it, uh, and it usually turns the consumer off. Begging is the other one, and I know that we have someone on here representing a mortgage company, but um, mortgage is my best example here, so I'm gonna use it anyway. Uh, and I don't think she has ever done this. Uh, maybe she has, I don't know. But it's probably not uncommon for you agents to have heard a mortgage person say like, just give me one opportunity to show you how smooth of a transaction this can be. Well, you know, just give me one chance to show you how great this is gonna be. You're, and you're, you're begging for an opportunity to, to show them what you can do. Can it work? Sure. But it's so much easier to say, you know what? This is me. This is what I can do. This is what I can offer. This is what I know other people can't or won't offer. It's not a generic promise. Uh, there's some objective element to it. There's some tangible piece behind it. Because uh, if that mortgage person says, hey, we have this product that nobody else has right now, that's way different, totally different ball game, right? So in the absence of having that brand, you're left to beg or brag for new business or rely on referrals. Once you develop this, once you figure out what makes you unique, it's a lot easier to promote yourself. And again, that's where we come in. That's what we want to help you with. So again, nothing to buy. Um, I think Christy has my, uh, the link to, um, hop on and schedule your time for our follow-up call. Basically all that call is, is I want to get to know your situation and share a little bit more about what we do. Um, and then we'll schedule a time to interview you and help you figure out what makes you unique. And again, we do all of that, uh, at no cost. We can potentially help you actually create the marketing messages for you down the road, uh, but I'm not even worried about that right now. Anybody who had everything crossed off today uh, from that why should I work with you answer, we probably need to sit down and figure out what makes you unique so you can put that out to the world. Um, so if we can put that, and actually I think, um, yeah, I'm, at, I'm getting the link right now. Oh, cool, thank you. Um, Is the link to book. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, we started talking at the same time. Oh, sorry. I said, yeah, everyone should definitely take advantage of it. I'm definitely interested too. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Thanks for doing that for free. I mean, that's, that's really awesome. I, I just went ahead and sent over the link you guys. So, um, um, if you're interested, just go ahead and click on the link and you get some extra free time with Dr. Frank. Awesome. Um, so yeah, you guys, while folks are, are doing that and picking a time that works for them, uh, if anybody has any questions, if you want me to run back over something or uh, another example, uh, now is a good time to do that. We, we finished two or three minutes before noon, which is cool. Um, so while you guys are doing that, if anybody has any questions, uh, now, now is a great time. Uh, but like I said, there, there's, no, there's no catch to what I'm offering. Um, I know that a class can only teach you so much in terms of what to do and what not to do, uh, but a, a class group environment can't help you figure out necessarily individually what works for you. Uh, and so we wanna be able to do that, uh, to do that for you. So, uh, make sure that you pick a time that uh, works. Somebody just asked a question. What about responding to them with why wouldn't you use me? <laughs> um, it's, I have a couple of thoughts about that and I'll give them, um, I'll give you all of them. One, you set them up for thinking about why they wouldn't use you, right? If you say, why wouldn't you use me? And they say, well, because my cousin just got licensed, so why wouldn't I just use him? Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily, uh, I don't think it's gonna win you the business. Now, there are some people who, and I always say marketing and sales work together, right? Uh, let, me, let me pull, I'm not sure if you can see me and the whiteboard. Um, marketing and sales work together. And um, the, the stronger you are at marketing, the less good you have to be at sales. For folks that don't necessarily have a strong marketing message, some people can just sell 
anything to anybody. I know realtors that, you know, they'll take an Uber ride <clears throat> and by the end, they've convinced their Uber driver to be their client, right? They're just so good at sales uh, that the marketing doesn't matter. So if you have the type of personality where you can sort of pull off, like, why wouldn't you use me? And that comes across in a way that people are like, oh my God, I like her. Um, then yeah, technically it can work, but a lot of times you're gonna have to be in person for that to work. Um, that's not necessarily going to translate into like a digital um, or online format. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. To me, that's more of a, uh, a sales response rather than a marketing response. I know we just had one other question pop up. Uh, is the bacon realtor a good example of branding or just a good gimmick for top of mind? Uh, and I think you answered your own question there. Um, it, is, it is absolutely a way to be kept top of mind. Um, you know, I've seen, I've seen the 420 realtor, right? So for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, right. It means I smoke pot, not me, that guy. Um, right. So like you can, and essentially what you're doing is saying, Hey, you and I have this thing in common, right? It would be like, if I were like, Oh, I'm, I'm the sun devil realtor because I love ASU and I do. Um, right. So it's like, we should pick each other because we have this thing in common. Uh, and it might make me stand out a little bit more, but if it's not related to the actual service that you're providing, you still leave open the chance that somebody else comes along and gives them something of value related to the buying or selling of a house. So anything that helps you stay top of mind to be remembered, um, like, oh, the bacon realtor, like I've totally, I've totally heard of that guy. Um, there's, the, uh, there's the tattooed realtor. I know he's out in, uh, in Chandler, right? It's, it's really easy to remember him, to notice him, um, you know, and other people that are very inked up might feel a, a connection and want to work together. Um, but it, uh, it's just, is that the tattoo realtor, Justin, is that his name? Um, but see, that's what I mean. Like, I don't remember his real first name. Uh, I remember the tattoo realtor. Um, and I have, I've heard, I've heard great things about him. Uh, and there are going to be some people who are like, oh my gosh, he's my kind of guy, which is cool. And that works. Um, but it's even stronger if you can tack on something specifically related to the actual service. And you can use all that other stuff also. I just like to make sure that we have something specifically related to the service. And then any gimmick that you want to help be remembered, like go for it. So hopefully that makes sense. Any other questions? Uh, somebody just asked if this was recorded. I see a button in the top corner that says record. So I think it is being recorded. Um, cool. Sounds like it is. Um, and so I think we can send that, uh, that link out. Um, I add, try not to share it with too many other folks because I want them to actually come to the class. Eh, who cares? Share it with folks. Right? Anybody who can see the message is going to be uh, is going to be helpful. I like when people sort of come to the class. In the ideal world, we could interact a little bit more. Um, but at least for your own benefit, you can have that recording. Um, I know a couple of people asked about the outline. I think we can get that sent out to you too. Um, if you um, if you didn't get that before uh, class today. Any other questions that I can answer for folks that uh, that might be beneficial for us all to, to hear that answer? And uh, Patrick, if you want to just uh, put your email address real quick in the chat box, I can actually send it to you right now, the outline, and then anyone else that would like it, I can go ahead and do that right now. <clears throat> Chrissy, yeah, not, not a problem. Okay, cool. Thank you. So yeah, so while we are uh, waiting for folks just to wrap up, I mean, let me say thank you to, uh, to Christy, to Kelly, uh, and to Madison for, uh, for having me in. I know uh, it's a weird time right now and we're not able to do classes the way that we normally would, but it also means that we're not able to market ourselves the way that we normally would, um, you know, which is honestly why I think um, you know, this, this content is particularly relevant because 
we're not able to do things the way that um, that we used to. So we have to we have to get better at maybe some of the things that we weren't uh, so great at before. Uh, I see a couple of thank yous coming through. You are welcome. You are welcome to all of you. Uh, hopefully, uh, I get to talk to uh, a bunch of you again very shortly. Again, we just need a couple of minutes to make sure that we can actually help, uh, and then we'll get that set up, and we'll help you figure out what the heck makes you unique, and, and help you figure out how to uh, how to get that out there. I will. Uh, I'll hang out. I won't log off, but I'll just hang out here for a second. But I think we can sort of officially wrap up. If you've already signed up for the call, you don't have questions. Uh, you can probably uh, log off and go get lunch or whatever it is that you're going to do. Um, I'll hang out for a second just in case, but thank you all again. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm just getting, um, but looks like Moses and Patrick. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Adolfo as well, sorry. Let me just grab these real fast before we get off here so I can send them the outline. Here. Yeah, and Christy, if you can send me the, the recorded part two on uh, the okay. link. That would be awesome because uh, I have a six and a four year old here, as you can hear. <laughs> and uh, I missed part of it. So, but I'm, I am signed up for like 245 with you, Dr. Oh, awesome. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I want to get that so I can go through it before, <laughs> like, skim through the, the checklist first before I meet with you. Right, for sure. Yeah. Just getting it over right now and make sure everybody who sent um, sent me their email. I'm getting it over. It'll be coming from Christy. And here we go. Just one more to go, you guys. I'll go. And uh, is it just going to be uh, audio or did you want to do a call like this? Uh, I just do all phone calls. Um, okay. it's, I'm actually not a huge fan of video chatting, which is weird for a guy who just did a webinar. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I'll just give you a call. So just put your phone number in there and I'll just give you a call. It is. Uh, it, a pretty short convo. Yeah, not a problem. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Just two more. I got um, Patricia and um, Sylvie. I think I, let's see. Oh, I, I got, oh no, maybe it didn't come through yet. All right, let me get them real fast. And then, perfect. All right. And last one, you guys. I'm glad everyone found this information beneficial. I always love listening to you, Dr. Frank. Do a really great oh. presentation. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. I, I got everyone that is on the chat. So, um, so everyone should have the outline and then hopefully um, some bookings, some one-on-one -on -one bookings. Um, so that's awesome. And then maybe for those of you, it looks like we got a, a handful of people still on here. Um, you know, any feedback about the class or, or maybe anything to expand on it? I, Dr. Frank, I'd love to have you back here again. Yeah, for sure. So, um, but yeah, this is like your staple class and it's a really great one. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I will, uh, I'm going to go ahead and log off if anybody, this way, anybody who's left, you can talk about me after I'm gone. It's a little easier to be honest that way. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and log out. Thank you guys. Hope uh, I'll chat with some of you soon. Thanks, uh, uh, Christy Kelly and Madison for having me and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you.